Here we are, Sketchbook Storytime, August 7th, 2023. So this is the first painting that you did or the second? The first. I was searching for paintings that I felt, well, that I liked, basically, and I liked the colours. The colours are more vibrant, actually. The photo wasn't probably very good. And I thought, well, the exhibition that we went to see, Pierre Bonnard, The Colour of Memory, if there isn't something in that book, well, I don't know where I'm going to find it. So anyway, I found that one and liked it very much. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll find another of Pierre Bonnard and do that as well, because the instruction was to find two and see how the colour balance differed. And then for some reason, I started looking at Barbara Ray, but her colours are far more saturated. So that wasn't a good match. So I picked up Winifred Nicholson. I went through and I thought, OK, the back of her book that I've got, which if you want me to hold it up, there it is, which is called Liberation of Colour. Are a whole section of paintings which she did, which were called Spectrum. And so I picked that one out and thought, well, that's really similar colours to the Pierre Bonnard, but it's yeah. different. So that was the second one. So I worked, first of all, on the Bonnard, and that's the one that I did most of the work for. So if you get back to the Bonnard. And then I think it's important for me to say that because last week you were suggesting wedges of colour and that stuck in my mind, OK, because we we're talking about colour wheel wedges and things and I remembered this dinner plate can I hold that up do you see that oh, yes remember the dinner plate that we did actually again it was with Tansy Hagen yes and it was like a template so that you could paint every day using the colors you were painting with you could paint a section and I thought right I'm going to do a big dinner plate and I took this template and I took spare bits just little bits of sketchbook paper that I had and I cut lots of wedges can you see that yes yeah okay mm -hmm. and then I color mapped the painting laboriously onto these pieces of paper yeah just yeah. in the but did do a little bit that if I thought it was just a tiny bit of the colour, I just did a tiny little slither, et cetera, all the way through. Then, so I started off and just worked my way around the painting, painting onto these. And then one of the slides you've got there in the sharing shows me with a pair of scissors. Because then I thought, well, if I'm going around the, the colour wheel, all I wanted to explain was that I ended up with these bits of paper with with bits of colour on, but they weren't necessarily in the right order to match up for the colour wheel. So then I started cutting these into smaller sections. So I ended up with lots and lots and lots of sections of colours. And I worked my way, took most of a day really, working through the painting. And then I got out your colour scheme game templates and I got out the colour wheel and I matched up my colours to the colour wheel and I used the template and painted in the middle of my big piece of paper. I painted using your template for the colour scheme game. I painted a colour wheel Excellent. with the colours that I'd been using, which were mainly art scribe, mainly those. So I used those to paint this colour wheel and and then I laid all my long pieces on it in just about the right. And I think you have got a slide of that, haven't you? Yes. I laid them in just about the right position. Yeah. Let me share for that. Yes. Yes. There we are. Look. Oh, OK. OK. Can you see that these are these pieces of paper with their stripes on for their yes. colour? just laid on the colour wheel that I had painted. On there. Yeah. So the colour wheel is painted on a piece of sketchbook paper. Uh -huh. And loose bits of my colour map laid on in what I uh, thought were the right places. But so some of these like... are all on one piece. That's why it looked like crepe paper, because in this yeah. one... Yeah, you because have... they, all, they all started off like this. Yes. 
wedges and some of them remained quite big pieces but some I'd cut up they all started like this but then right. when there was orange next to blue and to put it on the color wheel I needed to separate them I cut them up so I ended up with some with just one color like the sort of violety one like here yeah but then this has you, two. It's great, and this has yeah. And if you and if you look at the greens, the yellow into the green. Uh huh. The next one along, that is one piece. Yeah. With now, all, all those. from from there yeah. all the way to there. Yes. Yes. And this yeah. is one piece. These three. Yes. Yes. And, this, and then the blues. There's only two big wedges. Oh, this one. That, that is one. And then that around. one. And then that one. Yeah, yeah. Because there's a cut there. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, that's great. So I went to bed because one needs to sleep and thought, right, I know what I'm going to do because I really wanted to see if those colors worked with the Winifred Nicholson. So I thought, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut them off. So they sort of fit up against the colour wheel that I've painted. And then I will still have little triangular bits of the colours I can use. Do you like see that. what I mean? Yeah, so I cut them off, yeah. And I think it was on Saturday maybe that I stuck them down where I thought they ought to go. And you the stuck idea these was, down? Yeah, I stuck those down. I hadn't done what's on the right. I didn't do. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I didn't position them. OK, so I, I stuck them down and I put them to sort of represent the proportions and the colours and the colour scheme. I don't know whether that was right, but I was really pleased with how it looked because it's quite big. Look, it's quite big. Yeah. You see, it's quite yeah. big. And I just I just love looking at it. I just <laughs> love looking at it. And when I was putting the colours on... I was testing them, you know, just on this, but also on strips of paper. Okay. And I thought you did have a picture. It doesn't I matter. do. You know, so I've made little mini, mini, mini color maps and a spodgy one, which will end up as something. And that all ended up into that. That's great. so. Yesterday, which was Sunday, I thought, okay, I've got all these little bits so we can go to the next color map. So I'm sure you can see that all these little bits, these little pointy bits, are the tips that I cut off from the other one. Great. Yeah? Yeah. And I thought, well, the main difference there's a the subtle differences in in the blues and things, but the main difference was all the neutralized, all the neutral colors in the Nicholson one, yeah, which yeah. completely altered the balance of the picture. Yes, really. which shows there. Yeah, if you if you look, the Bonnard is on as I'm looking at it on the left, and the Nicholson is on the right. Okay, so. Yes. Yesterday and today, I painted a whole lot of neutrals that were sort of leaning towards their place in the colour wheel. And I did some yesterday, some today. And then I thought, right, OK, when I stick them down, I'm going to put the neutrals so they're sort of standing out a bit from from the colour wheel. And that's so that's what you can see there. That's laying the whole length of them onto that's your colour wheel. Yeah. With with the Nicholson um, one, I covered up the darkest blue. There's a really dark blue, quite a sort of um, a Prussian blue, really deep Prussian blue in the Bonnard that I didn't feel was in the Nicholson one. So I covered that up, and I had and I took out a couple of little slivers. Um, from the original color wheel, but otherwise they're all the same. Now, one thing that I found really interesting 
is exactly what you're talking about, that you saw a blue that it may have been so close, but it just wasn't there. No. And when you looked, it wasn't there and it shouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. And you realize how important those little nuances are or that other little sliver you took out. Yeah. As if it yeah. would make any difference, but it does. Yes. yes. And to do a we art, I'm so glad that you did the we art because there's so much in a we art. If you did the reverse, no, Bonard, Bonard, from- Bonard, 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 sorry. Yeah. We are also in the same, yes. the same way. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. That <laughs> in the painting, when you look at it, you feel like, oh, gee, you could put any color at all in there, just a tiny bit, like any color. Mm. But a tiny, even the tiniest bit of something that's a little too saturated or a little too blue violet or a little too ultramarine just doesn't sit right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's where trusting the, your intuition and your gut and doing things like this, where you realize your instinct is picking up on that. It's Mm. not just a mental exercise. Mm. Because when you, all right, how did you feel? What, what made you detect that blue? Was that more of a, of a feeling or a thought when you said, oh, that blue Um, covered up? I think it starts as a feeling and then you investigate the feeling and think about it. Because there was a lot of blue was a big wedge of blue in the Bonnard. Isn't there? Yeah. You see, if you look at the Bonnard, there's that sort of, in reality, in, in the book anyway, that sky is, is quite a sort of a pinky, purpley blue, which is why there's all on the color, on my color wheel, there's yeah. all those, yeah. And that's quite a large chunk of the yes. painting. And then there's that blind or whatever it is at the top above yes. the sky. Yeah. Now I had a big job getting that. There's a lot of color in there. And I had a lot of problems getting that color. Um, and then in the trees, there's a lot of darker blue that really you can't properly see, which is quite a sort of a green. I I use quite a lot of Prussian blue in there to try to get it um and i'm not sure that i did um so really what with then little bits of of very unsaturated blue in other parts on on the side of the the window casement or whatever it is um and then that little square there yes and down at the bottom really all and there's blue just above where your cursor is there's quite oh, a lot of that, blue there. Right in here? Yeah, in those stripes. Can you see very oh. faint? Yeah, and they the... look they look very blue violet here, more like a violet. Yes, they are. They are. They are. So they were part of that sort of blue violet type stuff going yeah. on. But yeah. you're you're so right. Look at all of the Yeah. The yeah. 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 And this blue is, you're right, very much more Prussian than this. Yes. This is yeah, good. that, I I, I tried um, ultramarine and cobalt. Um, and I tell you what was my saviour for the whole thing, because up until then, I think I had used com- almost completely art scribe, which I'm using quite a lot at the moment for the reason that I can very easily replace them. Okay, so so there's all my art scribe. You know, Mm -hmm. I've got quite a big palette of them. But the colour that I pulled out of A Gallo was um, Payne's Grey. Uh Uh-huh. And I found that made such a difference, you know, with the blue, blue blue-black. It's it's a blue-gray. This definitely is a neutralised. It's a kicked-back ultramarine blue. Yeah. Uh Yeah. Yeah. That's a keep that to stay dark like that yeah every time i for that reason i tried putting 
you know a little bit of orange in to neutralize it or whatever but it makes it paler because the orange the the color value of orange is yeah, pretty is. high yeah so the yeah. only choices you have there of yeah. a saturated color would be an alizarin crimson or some kind of a magenta which would make it too purple right or yeah. go towards the viridian which would make it too green yeah so, and a black would really kill it so your paint's gray was an excellent yeah. choice yeah, well, I've now put that Payne's Grey in into this little palette because I do, I do find it really, really useful for lots of things that I do. And then when I went on to the Nicholson one, I needed a stronger um, violety color, and I again from from my A Gallo because I've got that little separate lot of a gallo which was sort of ones that didn't fit in anywhere i've got them in yes. a separate tin actually it's an art scribe tin with them in um i use quinacridone magenta um and i'm sorry i was looking for the picture for which for the dark blue in this to get a purpley um, at the side between the pink and the blue there is there is a sort of a purple in there in there yeah yeah and and going off in into the other so i found that it, i found that the quinacridone magenta which is an a gallo color gave me that which i think if you look at the side at my color there look can you see I'm sort of pointing to it, which doesn't sort of help. No. <laughs> right. Take your cursor uh -huh. to the right. Uh -huh. Down, 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 down. That. This. Do that darker. Yes. Which was not a color that's on the other color wheel. So that was added. So some of the really sort of greeny blue I took out of the Bonnard. And the magenta -y violet I put in okay. to the yeah. There's none of this. See, there is nothing as dark here. as that. No. And you've got all of this, which there's just yeah. a touch in there, but you don't have this. No, that's the one I took out, and yeah. I covered it up with a sort of a brighter blue. And then and I reduced the I I reduced the percentage of or the proportion, I should say, of the blues and the purples, because there just wasn't so much colour. And I did try to put in all those neutrals. So you have, whoops. So here, th this is... I here. don't know that I got that really dark. I don't think I put that in. I didn't put that well, in. Well, right in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in your eyes, yeah. Yeah. Great choices for identical color schemes. You know, I really wonder how to use that term now. Yeah, yeah. Um, different feel. And yet, isn't that what, what we feel when we walk into a room? There might be a pillow or a chair that just doesn't fit with the whole room. Doesn't mean that if you had paintings that were hanging, that it's not like they have to match at all. Mm -hmm. But I find even though I don't hang paintings in my house because of because they match my furniture, there are some mm -hmm. paintings that detract from each other if you hang them in the same room. Yeah. Yeah. And these two could easily hang in the same room. Mm -hmm. And I find it has to do far more with color than it does with style or size. Or in, mm. it has to do with color. And it could be something as small as a little detail. Like the, well, if, if you had something with the blue you took out, it would work because it would tie together with the others. But imagine if you had something with a lot of viridian and pure alizarin in it. Mm. Mm. And it could be gorgeous painting. Mm but it, it would affect these and mm. these would affect that and make mm. it kind of garish looking then. Mm. 
And that's exactly what happens on a smaller scale within a painting. When someone looks, matches the color of say a, a lawn chair. Well, you know, people don't buy their lawn chairs to match the landscape. You know, and the landscape changes from spring to summer to fall. But if you're trying to have a really fall feeling landscape, you may not want a hot pink plastic Adirondack chair in it. And yet, if that's what's in it, you know, you have a right as an artist to change the color of things mm. and to make that, I mean, a turquoise. Adirondack chair would look better than a hot pink one in an autumn scene unless you put a lot of pink in your trees I mean somehow it has to work together yeah well I think that that you did an unbelievable job on this well it it did teach me a lot I mean I'm not yeah I'm not sure when we look at yours whether mine sort of really answers the challenge but it really really made me look and it made me look at my colors and yeah it was well, fascinating to be honest and I, I love the did, result I just love them <laughs> you did exactly what I would have done had I not decided that I wanted to make that template to be able to make examples of things more quickly I find mine dreadfully boring, you know, these, you know, but it's easy to plop a color and it's easy to change a color. Yeah, I knew absolutely. if I did something like you did, it would take me two, three days to do. Yeah. And then I would have to edit and put it all together and, to make sense of something. Yeah. So yeah, this yeah. is what I did so that I could in the future more easily move things around you add these little circles and just I mean it took me three or four hours to figure out how to use illustrator because I don't use that I don't I don't do that that much mm -hmm. uh, but what I wanted was for people to do exactly what you did to work with paper so you could cut it and you could make it bigger and smaller and manipulate it and be able to take it away or add it that's that's exactly what it was meant for. This was just, um, I, I don't want to say quick and easy this time because it was, but the next time if I did it the same way, I could mm. adjust things quickly. And I did find this, for me, it was amazing, the little tweaking I did. When I would make this a different color because I could drop it in, you know, I could easily yeah. with an eyedropper. You have no idea how many different blues and nuances of blue with that eyedropper I did so that, that it rang true to this. Mm -hmm. So for me in making this and also the amount, okay, so the percentage, I would make this triangle and I could do it by just kind of my arrow pushing it down. Yeah. I adjusted that so many times because when I, when I looked at this part and I looked at that part, I thought, no, not right. And it still certainly is not right, but it felt much less right when some, when one of these was bigger or smaller. Yeah. You yeah. know, I would look and say, well, I mean, like the yellow, I see this. Well, here was another thing. As I looked at this, oops. Um, I realized that this yellow, now what the real painting is, I don't recall. I'm just going by what I have. It's a postcard. Um, this was very yellow green. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mm -hmm. look at so much here, but I had to add this and there's far more yellow green than there is of the yellow. Mm. Yes, yeah, yeah. And the whole, the whole point of this is to explore it that much when you have to decide how much of something there is not just identify the color which again that mm. that's really valid and and regular old color mapping but to look and see then i saw wow you know there there is some bright orange in there mm. and it's surrounded by something else which makes it look more of a neutral 
like it it's surrounded by a little yellow green which makes it look less orange it neutralizes it because as the impressionists found a lot of color mixing was happening three inches this side of the canvas yeah. because what we're dealing with is light reflecting so it's mixing all those little dots the pointillism and the impressionistic kind of blobs mixes not on the canvas but in front of the canvas between the canvas and the viewer and it also happens when you surround like this right close to the eye is surrounded by a more pure a lighter value yellow you know and and maybe a more in, intense kind of yellow green whereas this looks more neutralized it's more yeah. of an olive green but very light olive green and that oh, well, it wasn't that one it was in the more I look, the more circles I wanted to put in, like your little I know, budget. I know, you could go on forever, couldn't you? Because but that you know. was recognizing that. I in the beginning I was doing it. I thought, okay, I'll do this, do this. I didn't even realize that that was so yellow green. And mm. yet that ended up being more important than the yellow that I thought. Mm. And when I looked in here, I thought, let's see, was it this one? Yeah. I thought with this one, I did this one first. And there was all this black. And I thought, oh, you know, there's all this black. Well, the the more I looked into it, look, this is not black. No. And a whole lot of this dark, is not dark black. blue again, isn't it? It's that blue. It's a really dark blue that mm. and that's kind of speckled with other things. So I had to make, I hope I did this right. Yeah. Look at how much smaller the black is here than there. Mm. Mm. And it may not be the right proportion, but when I look at it, these, what stands out is the difference in the black, certainly the difference in the blue. I've got a big difference in blue too. Mm. I didn't have any, um, even though that's blue, I didn't have any of this blue, hardly any of that. It was much more only this, this light blue was really this and this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then these in the, in the cheek, um, and this cheek, look at the difference in the cheeks. <laughs> here are these cheeks. And here are these cheeks. Mm. And what if these cheeks had been put over onto this one? It would look very different. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So I definitely want to do a lot more of this. Um, <laughs> and play with it and what i thought okay did i show this yes i love that one um i also included in this and i i, and I didn't adjust for the extra blue light but i wanted to bring this one up again because i thought how fun if you do a bunch of these that aren't painted in yet in a sketchbook like for mm -hmm. fun mm -hmm. then as you're doing some of these, oops, that doesn't help to point to. As you're doing some of those and you're mixing colors or or making your, you know, all your little strips, just as you, uh, as we made the pie plates, the, the dishes with tails. Yeah. yeah. You can playfully color in. in some automatic drawing. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. see how that compares because you're mixing colors and it's all the same thing what the proportion in the end you could color map the <laughs> the playful one that you did as a result of mixing your colors while color mapping the other ones yes i know just... that's a little um add i guess but i still think that that there's so much to learn by going through this. And if you enjoy it, it's a never ending gold mine of mm -hmm. delving deeply into color, into, into the nuances, into, I mean, you discovered what you can, another thing you can do with paint spray that is important enough for you to include it in your palette now. Yeah. And, and the thing is that as you're trying to mix the colors, you ask yourself, why can't I get that blue? 
and you go back to what you know, whatever it is that you know about color, ask mm -hmm. yourself those questions like, well, you know, it's a blue. So what are my other dark pigments other than black, which fall into the, the green or the red? And then you ask yourself, what happens when you add green to blue? What happens when you add red to blue? And then, okay, what are my options? So without going lighter and any orange, any warm red, any yellow is going to lighten that blue. It's going to make a different yeah. color, but it will lighten it. And you yeah. don't want to depend on black to make it dark. So, I mean, some things, black, sure. Black is great mixed in with yellow to make greens and black can be used with reds, but you just have to test out which black. But Payne's gray is a much, it's going to give you a much livelier dark, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Because it's already mixed. It's already like a lot of blue and black mixed together. Yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah. So it's a very, it's more useful, I think, than having a black in your palette. Yeah, I guess it behaves slightly differently. I've got a graphite in that palette, um, which is quite useful to use as a, as a graphite. It is, but I don't think that it's quite as dark, is it? I don't think no, it's it's dark. more of a gray. It's more of right. a gray. Yeah, and so, it's a warmer. It's a warmer gray. So, in light of looking at how yours are done, was it useful or not useful to just paint the pure colors in a color wheel? Um, what I and maybe I took it out. Well, I didn't do that because I wasn't painting at all. No, but in me doing it. Oh, I think it was. I was, think it was very was useful. Was it a sensible thing? Because my reasoning was that then that sort of located the colors in the painting. I basically, think, right. color wheel. And, and these are the colors. There, there, are, there are, I think, three or four other colors that aren't, aren't there. But that basically is the art scribe palette. I think that it's usual. Now you mix these purposefully for this. Yes. Painting. After I after I'd done the color mapping bit. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think it's useful for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that you're going to put your yellow, your red, and your blue equidistance away from each other. Mm. And I do so that I can compare different color wheels. There was a time when I did different proportions, like it was mostly green, then I may have, you know, a whole two thirds of it blue or something, but I try to stay to this format so that I can compare and you can see how many greens you have to crunch into an area or how many blues you have to crunch into an area. And then you can see like it's mostly you know, tons of blue greens. I just find it easier to keep mm. to the format which you did and then place it in exactly the way you did. Like those yeah. those blues were all scrunched together. Well, they have to be scrunched together because that's where they belong. And I've said you, all I can on. see I didn't make a very good job of the orange and the red orange. They look the same on the wheel. On it's the very wheel. hard. Those are the hardest to, to see differently. And that yeah. is why when you're taking extra pigments with you, yeah, why I bring two reds, mm. I never bring two yellows right. um, if I'm limited to four because there's very little difference in that that is discernible in the oranges. And you can make a yellow orange of sorts with the with a cool yellow and a cadmium red light. Okay, so but, but what about the greens? Because if you look at those greens, they well, the were all greens, made with cadmium yellow light. Well, I use um I use I don't use cadmium yellow light. The cadmiums will make a gray or green. So for my little tiny palettes, mm. I use the, um, that's when I would, I would use the Oriolan. 
which is very cool green. Okay, but that but that's a cool yellow. That's a cool yellow or okay. a lemon. I would use a lemon. Okay. Um, yeah. You could use a cadmium light, but it still has cadmium leans toward red. Yeah. More so. Um, I, the you're going to sacrifice greens yeah. a little bit, but you can still get reasonable greens with a cool yellow. Yeah. Okay. And using yeah. the two blues, you know, you, you yeah. can get a really, really spring green with a phthalo blue and a cool yellow. Yeah. Yeah, and then you can subdue blue. it with your ultramarine really quickly. Yeah. So I don't need a warm yellow for my tiny, tiny palette. I like to what? have both. I was you know, trying to have use... a gamboge and an aureole, and I will, but yeah. I'd rather have the two reds where I get my full range of violets. Yes. And, yeah. and, and I get my kind of red, which I can't live without. And then I, I get all my oranges too. But yeah. it's so hard to make what's, you know, between the red orange, the red orange, the warm red, and the orange can just all look the same so often. Mm -hmm. I think on the other wheel, they were a little bit more successful, but I know what I was doing. And it's just a reference. Yeah. You see that, that, well, no, the orange still isn't right, but the warm red is more convincing on that one. You know, this to to be too finicky about this mm -hmm. is not gaining you that much knowledge. You like with this, but the way I figure it is that I know, mm -hmm. I know the frustration of making your different oranges over there. <laughs> and my eye can adjust. It's these outer things. Look at this. These are so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Those are very um tea room, the the Glasgow for the tea rooms that Macintosh. And his wife mm -hmm. did very much these colors. And these are also both, well, Bonard, of course, and Boyard colors. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, this is a very exciting color. Isn't it an inspiration to do a whole lot of different paintings? Yes, yes. And yes. that's why I thought it'd be fun to paint in some of your yeah. automatic with these as you go just for fun yeah it's fun yeah, yeah have you got the video oh yes let me that was what i was going to start off with that's what this was i think oh okay there we go okay there it is oh it was that one the squashed one i i think what happened was it it's when good, it good. to good. a 1920 format instead of being the format? See, look at that. And I took a screenshot of that, which is why I got it squashed. Yeah. You see, I know the color wheel for the Nicholson was the wrong orientation without the yellow at the top. But actually, when you when you watch this video, it it goes very nicely into yes. the paint doesn't it look yes yes <laughs> yeah but Winifred Nicholson it made me look at that book again and I mean her work is is exquisite it's brilliant yeah that's the same book I have isn't it um no no I think I got it in St Ives but I have seen her work in um Cambridge we could talk about her one time in and yeah, I'd have to class. remember and read up more about her. But um, her first ones were very, you know, all, almost traditional, sort of still life and things. But then she did this spectrum. And I think this was towards the end of her life. And, and she did a whole series. I love the colors that are right over this ball, like these. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Huh. Okay, well, my great job for me for sure. Thank you for for spending all that time on these. That is well, wow, I've enjoyed it. Uh, example of what I hoped would happen, and now I just I can't wait to get back to the studio and to work on circles and make some of these. 
you remember when you brought your beam color sample sheets and opened up the big sheets? Yes. You see, I love those. I think they should be in frames. Yeah. Take and your I, breath away, we, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, these aren't quite in that league, but equally, oh. I'm almost tempted to put them in frames. You know, I, mean, I, I would. Won't. I certainly won't, but you know they just i just enjoy them as pieces on their own you know what might be fun is to and i think maybe you have one there are frames that things can easily pop in and out of you know and you have one yeah. frame that you just pop something in that you like to see and then you yeah. switch it out yeah. for something else you know it's a yeah. it's yeah. not a big deal to have it framed it just is there yeah uh, yeah. Like the what the paintings that you have leaning against the glass of the staircase, yeah. where you get yeah. to see them all the time and reflect yeah. on them yeah. and learn from them. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. So thank you for making me do that. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you'll do another one? Um. Yes, I do. But I have to say, I'm sort of up to my eyes in Tansy as well at the moment. Oh, oh, absolutely. Great. All right. Thank Lovely. you very much. See you okay. soon. Okay. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.